everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Cave Story. On the last episode, we defeated Igor, the enraged Mamiga, and then rescued Sue, found the number 00 dragon egg, and then made it out of the egg corridor. Now we are back in Arthur's house, and we're you know, going to take a minute or two to actually advance the story. If you'll remember, at the end of the last episode, uh, King had just imprisoned Sue because he wants to do a prisoner exchange with the Doctor and get Taroko back by giving the Doctor Sue. Something that, uh, if you know, like, evil supervillains, you think they're gonna do a one-for-one -one trade? That's probably not gonna happen. What's to stop the Doctor from just taking Sue? Or from taking King, for that matter? One thing I never understood is why he's only taking a Mamiga at a time, but I'm sure someone who's more well-versed with the lore of the game could perhaps clue me into that situation. So yes, Sue has been imprisoned here and there's nothing we can do for her directly, so what this dialogue is doing is basically assigning us our next quest. We are essentially going to uh, go rescue Sue's brother, who's in a location called Grass Town. Uh, no points for guessing what the foliage of choice is there. And we're, this is basically going to be a you know, similar situation to the Egg World. We're just going to jump into Arthur's house, uh, not practice judicious saving, which I hope I do not regret, and then head to Grasstown instead of the Egg Corridor. No reason to go back to the Egg Corridor yet, but we will see that a little bit later on in this video. So we are in Grasstown now, actually one of my favorite worlds in the game of the, uh, I guess, four, five, or six that, uh, that you actually do travel to. So here we are talking to, no joke, uh, Santa Claus, or his name is Santa. And the guy got, poor guy got mobbed by monsters outside of his house, so we've got to go rescue his key for him. But luckily this is not too, too much of a, a fetch quest. Talk to another one of these prophetess fellows here. Soldier to the surf soldier from the surface. I wonder what that means. The one useful thing he does is uh, clue us into the nature of these power critters over here. These are actually by far the hardest enemy we've faced in this game. Particularly those blue ones will take almost all of your health off if they land on you. I think they they take off ten, and you know more than that, they're actually just kind of a piss off because uh, they will cause you to immediately level down with whatever weapon you're using. So if you get hit by a couple of them on a couple of different weapons, you can find yourself pretty much uh, back at the start of the game in terms of the strength of your weapons. So we can see uh, Santa's key just kind of lying down here on the ground. I can understand why he why he abandoned it. This is kind of a, a hard place to be if you're a frail old man with literally no weapons. With a gun, it's actually still kind of a challenge, and I usually try to take my time when I'm dealing with these power critters because, uh, again, if one of them drops on you, because we have so little health right now, uh, so little total health, one of them drops on you, you can find yourself in a bad place. <laughs> so we give Santa his key back, and then we're gonna step inside of his house. Never come inside of an old man's house, especially if he's named Santa, if he says he's got a reward for you. That's li life lesson number six. So we'll save, obviously, and if we lost any health or ammunition, we would uh, go to that uh, health and ammunition refill. Worth, things worth noting here is that uh, in any house where there's a bed, you can sleep in it to replenish your health, even if there isn't a health replenisher box like that heart on it. So while I was rambling about that, we got our next weapon, the Fireball. Fireball is actually one of the more useful weapons in the game, and we'll level that up as soon as possible, because uh, in Grasstown it's quite effective. What Santa just told us is that uh, if we want to progress any further into Grasstown, we actually have to walk through... Uh, a guy named Chaco's fireplace. So yes, secret passage contained in the fireplace that's pretty practical except for the third degree burns you get all over your body anytime you wanted to go into your backyard. The other thing we learned, that was quite a quite an informative trip into uh, Santa's house, is that the red spikes will kill you instantly so you gotta watch out for those. And we will see some more, uh, some more of those punji stick red spike pits coming up a little bit later as we progress through Grass Town. Particularly when we make it through uh, Chaco's fireplace. And of course I'm just doing the, the standard use the polar star to kill enemies and then switch to the, the fireball in order to level it up as fast as possible. So with the fireball, the reason it's 
quite effective is that you can fire off a lot of shots at once and they travel along the ground. So if there's any enemies along the ground, you can take them out pretty quickly with this alone. You can also uh, fire a bunch of fireballs and then switch to another weapon while they're, while they're in transit. So you could, you know, you'd presumably do some weapon combinations that would do some considerable damage. Overall, I, I still prefer the Polar Star, but in certain junctures, the Fireball is a more effective weapon to use, and I, I'll plan to use it uh, you know, relatively, relatively frequently throughout this. But, you know, more, more of the time I'll be using the Polar Star. I'm a, I'm a Polar Star guy. The first time I played through the game, I actually used the Polar Star for pretty much everything. Uh, every single boss, and uh, I think maybe I used the, the Blade weapon a couple of times, but that's about it. So we're gonna try to make this a little bit tricky jump here and get up to that life capsule. Probably the easiest way to do this would actually be to break those breakable blocks and then go up, but you know, I'm, I'm not always one to do the e things the easy way. So we'll just jump up here and get this life capsule, which I believe raises our health by three. Oh, it increases it by five, excellent. So now with 21 health, we're actually not doing too badly. Uh, we could presumably get pretty far in the game on this little health alone, but uh, for understandable reasons, I'm going to try to not only show off every life capsule, but also get every life capsule, because it makes the game that much easier. And again, as I've mentioned a couple times thus far, uh, it is pretty challenging, so you know, the more things you have going for you, the better. So, we've gone as far as we can go, let's talk to Chaco. And worth noting that there is a bed in here, so if we ever get hurt, we can replenish our health. Not replenish our missiles, but that's okay, because I tend to only use those on bosses. And there's Chaco's fireplace, but, you know, what are we going to do? Just run straight through it and deal with all the horrible skin grafts that we'd have to get afterwards? Beyond the flickering flames, you spy a hole. That's how I met my first girlfriend. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. So we've got to get this jellyfish juice from the jellies. I was going to make a terrible joke there, but I will just abstain. Anyway, so now we're, this whole world is inundated with these jellyfish-type enemies. And, uh, you know, heartfelt confession, I don't have a lot, of, a lot of phobias or even a lot of fears, really. Jellyfish are one of them. They just kind of weird me out. So this, this part of the game uh, actually you know, is a little bit icky for me. And the same thing happened to me in Minecraft. I got into playing it uh, before they put gas in the game, and then Notch was like, By the way, we added this like eight-foot-tall jellyfish that shoots fireballs out of its mouth. And I was like, Hey, man, thanks for the nightmares. I'm never going to sleep again, you asshole. And actually, I, <laughs> confession, I still play Minecraft, but I have never actually gone into hell for that reason. Because I'm a, a scared little girl when it comes to marine creatures who literally could not kill me unless I swallowed one. So this part of the game is actually a little bit tricky, because as you can see, I just accidentally jumped headlong into all these enemies, and now I'm basically shitting my pants just trying to get out of the situation before it gets any worse. They, the uh, power critters bounce you around a lot, so if you get stuck in between them, it's hard to get out. I actually lost a fair bit of health. I'm not in danger of dying right now. I lost a fair bit of health, and I lost a lot of experience on my Polar Star, so I've got to get that back up. Now that my Fireball is maxed up, I can change back to the Polar Star and hopefully get that to a reasonable level. Polar Star level 2 is so weak compared to level 3 that it's a real detriment. I'd, I'd like to be able to kill these jellyfish a little bit faster, because every moment that they're on the screen, Makes me want to claw my eyeballs out and like, like my skin is crawling. Uh, jellyfish that are rendered like this aren't so bad. I swear to God, those gas give me like serious, serious, not panic attacks. But that's making light of a serious condition, but uh, you know, I don't feel good when I'm near a gas. It just doesn't feel right. The same way I guess some people might be afraid of spiders. So we don't get the jellyfish juice juice from just a random. Uh, a random jellyfish. We actually just have to kill this one. So we could have presumably not cleared out everyone in that area, and that probably would have been easier, but you know, where's the fun in that? I'll try to do that for later parts, just to, um, you know, just to keep things expedited, to keep the process going quickly. So now that we have the jellyfish juice, juice we can go a little bit further into Grasstown. And actually, this is where we'll start to get to the meat of Grasstown and where the story starts to progress a little bit. But for now, let's just go into Chaco's house and, you know, recover that health that I lost by being a total idiot and just jumping headlong into that power critter fuckfest. And then we'll go up here and save, and we will call this a part. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time.